Okay, uh, I got some questions from people, uh, a couple of people that are uh, just getting started uh, learning how to make beats or, or they haven't started yet. So <clears throat> there's a number of things that uh, you have to do. The, the, each one of these is called a track where the pointer is. Um, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six tracks on here. So um, I have the 808 here. Um, because I want to play it like an instrument, I put what's called a simpler. So in order to put that in here, you go into the instrument section and you put it in this track and then you go find a sound you want. So I have a library right here and then I have sounds here, all different types of sounds. And so I went, uh, I think I went in this and I took something from TM88's uh, drum kit and I put the 808 in here. So it was empty before, I grabbed the 808, clicked on it and put it in here. And now um, I can show you if I press buttons, it's on high, but play, play the 808. Um, the second track here is a drum rack and so uh, these are all MIDI tracks. None of these are audio audio or recording tracks. These are all MIDI that you play with the MIDI controller. So um, this is a MIDI drum rack. So I opened up another MIDI track so you can click on here. Every time you open up a new thing, you can click on here and insert MIDI track or insert audio track right there. So that's what I did. That's why how I created these six tracks. So I put the drum rack in here. So I went to the drums, I picked the drum rack right here. I just moved it in there and it opened up. And then again, I went to my sounds and um, all my drum kits are right here. Uh, and then I just filled it up. You know, I put a kick here, a clap, a snare, a perk and a crash. Then I did the same thing with, with, with this MIDI track right here. I put a, got the drum rack, pulled it over into here, and then I put hi-hat. So I put um, this hi-hat, and then this is a hi-hat roll. I mean, you can play them yourself. It's a little bit hard to play um, quick rolls on the MIDI controller. Uh, you can with an arpeggiator. A lot of people actually just write them in because it's kind of easier that way. But this is, um, if you want to do it, then you can, you can also play your hi-hats as an instrument and, and pitch them down. And in order to do that, you would just like you did with the 808, you take a simpler, put it in here, and then put that sound of the hi-hat, the hi-hat sound you want in that simpler. Okay, this is another uh, um, MIDI track. And for this, I wanted to play like instruments. Um, you know, these are mostly, uh, you know, 808s. This is just the drum section. Here are the instruments. So here I grabbed a, open up my plugins. Um, they do have instruments here on the instrument rack in Ableton and they got a bunch of stuff in here. Um, the preset, you gotta mess with the presets to make them sound better. I'm not really good at that. And so I bought plugins like Omnisphere. Um, I think it was like 400 bucks. I bought Contact, which was like, uh, again, that was like $400. Um, I have also, what else do I have in here? That I have uh, Sauce Scorch. Scorch is pretty good. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here that's already on presets. They got effects. Um, you can find some really cool sounds in here too. Um, and then they got effects knobs that you can adjust and make different sounds. Um, I like it. Um, I used it for a little while, but um, I'm using Omnisphere just because there's a ton of sounds in here and these are more kind of sounds that you can adjust you can control it a little bit more um, not to say that Scorch is bad because it's not it's got a lot of cool sounds in here but this just gives you more uh, ability to adjust and I really need how to learn it so that's why I'm using it um, and so I also put instance of Omnisphere in here and instance of Omnisphere in here and so whenever you want to record something, you have to press this button right here, the arm button. So if it's just like that, 
I did, I have to, I had some more to click. So if it's just like this, why is it, I don't know. But in order to run it, if it's like this, it's not gonna work. It has to be clicked on red. You click on it and then it's ready to, ready to go and you can record. And in, in order to record, you hit this button. You could also hit this button but this is easier, it's just overdub, and I'm just so used to using it, that's what I use. Um, and so whenever we record, we click that. They have a metronome here, uh, and when it's on yellow, it's gonna play. You could choose how fast you want your metronome to be, um, and then that's what you do. And then, um, you know, if you're not going to play it in, you go to the piano roll and you put stuff in here. And what I do is I put all this stuff in here, but I want Max to play it. So I highlight it and deactivate it. But it's still there so you can see it. Um, it's actually a very cool tool to have to teach him rhythm and how to play. And he's gotten very good at it. Um, I don't know if that's what they put it in here for. Maybe they did. Uh, maybe they did. I'm not sure. But... All you do is you go on here and you can activate the note or like I did when it's, when they're all highlighted here, you could deactivate the note uh, or activate. I have it activated. Now I come in here and I deactivate. Uh, I deactivate. So now it's ready for Max to play. Um, that's really the basics of getting started. This all has your... Um, your uh, your levels right here, your, or they I guess they call them faders, and so this is going to determine how loud the instrument's going to be, or how loud the sound. Then you have your panning knobs here, and for 808s you're going to just leave it in the middle, pretty much for drums as well, except your hi hats and your your perks you will you can um, uh, pan those, uh, and most people do. I, I know I do. Um, I hats here, I pan them a little bit. Uh, usually the open I pan a little bit to the right and the regular uh, I pan to the left. And then you can also automate the panning, just kind of change it so it kind of goes between and a lot of people do that because it gives, gives it kind of a cool effect, but you have to go into automation and that's kind of a different different thing. So anyways, that, that's how you get started. Um, and usually, you know, if for me or, and Max, if we're under 100 BPMs, I'm recording four bar loops. If we're recording in double time, I usually record eight bar loops. Um, sometimes we'll do 16, uh, depending on, you know, the vibe of the song. And, um, you know, a lot of times you do uh, just because you want to make subtle changes on the second half of the verse or bar or whatever. Um, but that's what we do, you know. I'm no by no means an expert. Uh, I still am learning a ton in here. Um, and like I said in, in a previous video, I do not know a ton about music. I'm learning, and um, this is how I do it. But this is a good way to get started. Um, and for anyone who wants to learn, uh, I think Ableton has uh, some good stuff in here. I know a lot of people use FL. And, you know, that might be easier for some people. Uh, it's possible it's, this is easier for me because this is when I got started on. So, anyways, um, that's it. I uh, hope everyone listening has a good day. All right, take care.